Hi, everybody. I'm Stephen Bartlett. I am the ex CEO of Social Chain, which is a company I founded at 21 years old, which became a global social media marketing, e commerce, and media business. I took that company at 21 years old from just myself to over 700 people around the world and listed the company last year back in 2020 on the stock exchange in Germany. My journey was crazy. It was filled with all of the things you typically hear about in entrepreneurial journeys, the highs, the lows, the, the moments of great success and the, acc the accolades, and, and also some real, real challenges. 2020 was a, a challenging year for all business owners. It was a year where being an entrepreneur was a very testing and costly for many pursuits. And this is really why I started my podcast, The Diary of a CEO. And it was really to get into and delve into the untold stories of founders and their journeys, which you don't usually hear, the things you don't see on Instagram, the things you don't understand just by reading headlines. I'm thrilled to be joined by a remarkable entrepreneur, Alex Luizu, who is the CEO and founder of Truva. Despite lockdown restrictions back in March, Alex managed to keep 75% of its UK boutiques uninterrupted, which I think is a remarkable service to be offering to SMEs at a time when they need it the most. And Alex's business has been an absolute juggernaut. After closing a successful round of funding in 2019 of 17 million, after rapid expansion across the EU, and after claiming the top spot in the UK Startup 100 Index, alongside some incredible businesses, Truva is a UK startup that you have to keep your eyes on. I've got so much to ask this entrepreneur about his journey, about how he sees the future, about the role Pinterest has played in his journey. So let's get into it. Alex, welcome. You know, my first question, I wanna, I wanna understand you a little bit better. And I've been doing a ton of reading about mm -hmm. your background and your journey to where you are today. But I guess the first question I'd ask is, of all the businesses that an entrepreneur like yourself could have possibly started, how did the stars align to bring you to start this business at this time? Yeah, I think it was part of it, it was an element of luck. Uh, I never thought I was going to come into retail. Uh, the space was completely foreign to me when, when I was graduating because um, we started the business straight out of uni. Uh, but one thing in retrospect that really appealed to me was this thinking of independence, um, independent thought, independent spirits, uh, people that go out of the ordinary and, and, and try to, to create their own vision and their own brand. And, and that's what these um, shops stand for, right? They're, they're run by people that have their own aesthetic and their individual kind of style. And then taking that and showcasing that to the world uh, and letting everyone having that extra independent choice of buying from them, uh, that, was something, that is something that is very core to the business. And I think that is something that I've always had in myself as well. So moving on to your business, Alex, um, obviously the, the tectonic plates of every business were, were shifted back in March, April time when the world um, fell into the pandemic. I, I guess the question I have for you is how did that impact your business as a sort of an online player? And if you could give me a bit of a timeline of events and also talk to me about how you know it positively impacted your business, but also negatively impact, impacted your business. That'd be very interesting. Yeah, sure. I think uh, what is important to bear in mind is that we obviously have uh, the online component of, of generating sales um, and opening our doors up to a worldwide audience. But then we have the offline component as well, because every single curator on Truva has a physical shop. And so from that perspective, um, there was a very big risk from the very beginning that all of these guys wouldn't be able to open up their doors anymore. Uh, we noticed or we realized how big that risk was in mid end February when Italy was going into lockdown because we did have and we still have quite a few shops in Italy. Um, and at that point, you know, no one knew what a lockdown is. Like everyone expected this is never going to happen. You know, like would you ever lock down a city? Never, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at that point, we just the situation became very serious very quickly because if they have to shut down their stores, all of their offline sales are gone, right? And these are shops, a lot of them are still doing like 80, 90% of their revenue offline. So the world was, was going to lose some of the best curators of the offline space in a very short amount of time. So um, initial shock, uh, but then very quickly responding with, okay, how do we extend our operational model? How do we change the way that we um, sell stuff through? How do we extend our logistics capabilities so these guys are able to still um, sell 
And so from April onwards, even though lockdowns were growing across Europe, uh, we were able to keep all of these guys online, uh, which meant that um, instead of having an impact of like 80, 90% of the revenue is gone, uh, we're talking more like 20, 30%. And, and then, you know, from June, July onwards, we just saw a dramatic shift in terms of audiences and people online shopping a lot more home decor, shopping for themselves, comfort wear, all, that, all those trends that started coming through. Um, so that really helped us grow sales very quickly because people were looking for inspiration, right? People weren't able to go to restaurants anymore. People weren't able to go out in the offline world and experience these shops. People were looking for other places and Pinterest will have seen a lot of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we saw a, a, quite an uplift in sales and, and that's been amazing because it, it's meant that we were able to support these independents and, and really help them grow in a year where sales have been backwards for many of the offline retail players. And talk to me about that point on, on inspiration and the role that a site like Pinterest plays in driving and sort of, you know, driving inspiration, but also in sort of organic discovery of, you know, e-commerce products that people, people love. And especially as it relates to your business and how it's been a sort of a cornerstone in accelerating your business. Yeah, I mean, from the, the, when, you, when you take a step back, you know, like there's two types of, there's a buying experience and then there's a shopping experience. The buying experience, you typically already know what you want. Um, you just want to get it as quickly as possible, you want to search for it, get it as quickly as possible and then get it to your home and that's it. That's where it pretty much ends, right? Uh, but then that, that experience has made itself quite evident online, uh, I would say. But then there's another part to the experience which is a lot more experiential, it's a lot more content driven, it's a lot more about striving for inspiration, trying to find something that extends my sense of style and aesthetic or something that is fundamentally kind of like meaningful uh, and also emotionally meaningful to myself. And, and that is an experience that hasn't really made itself online when it comes to the retail space, but Pinterest has built a massive platform over the years where people are doing exactly that, right? Like Google may have solved the get information very quickly, but then who is curating the world's information? And, and that's, that's where Pinterest is very powerful. Uh, and for us, it just was a logical step to basically figure out, okay, how can we build an organic content strategy that is particularly trying to add more value to the Pinterest user and uh, help them extend their sense of style whilst also having the entire supply chain behind it so you can actually buy these products straight away. You know, I've, I, I spent the last, oh God, eight years working with the world's biggest brands and they've, I think I've seen this shift of them realizing the importance of Pinterest as a sort of central mm. pillar of their content and social media strategy. You're someone that really gets it and has also therefore seen the the huge upside and advantages of really cracking um, and understanding the power of Pinterest. So when you talk about that organic strategy, can you give me a couple of tips and tricks um, for, for how other brands like yourself might be able to use an organic approach to make the most out of the power of Pinterest? I think it, it boils down to a very basic point, which is who is the audience and how can you add value to them with the content that you're providing? Right. In our case, for example, we know that there is beautiful visual merchandising happening within the shops of these curators. So how do you bring that into a platform like Pinterest, for example? How can you leverage their visual merchandising and, and bring it online in a form that lends itself well to the online world? Uh, right? Like a 360 camera isn't going to give you the same emotional feeling. A beautifully curated board might. And talk to me now about the, the paid side and the paid ads side of, of Pinterest, because when you think about um, ads across social platforms and Google and YouTube, and Facebook, wherever, you know, a lot of those ads are quite evasive, right? They're, mm. they're interrupting the consumer's journey with something they probably didn't ask for, sometimes mm. in a format that they weren't, you know, weren't interested in, right? Pre-roll ads and things like that. On Pinterest, you, you have an opportunity to to create and deliver ads of things people are looking for in the way that they were, were looking for in the, in the content format they are. So it feels like the holy grail of advertising because you can put things in front of people that they were looking for, that they will like, that doesn't really feel like an ad. So talk to me about the success you've had with the ads, but also you know, how best practices with leveraging Pinterest, um, Pinterest sort of paid functions. 
So in our case, you know, uh, we, we've done a lot of mistakes in the past trying to kind of like just supercharge growth by doubling down on paid marketing on different platforms. And, and one of the biggest learnings that we've had from those, uh, from those days was that it doesn't, that if you, can, if you can figure out a repeatable way of building out organic traction, then ads lend themselves really well to using your insights from there and transferring them into a more scalable um, kind of uh, environment where you can actually uh, accelerate your growth uh, through a paid budget, right? But sure. one needs to live alongside the other. You can't have, you can't just focus on one, at least from our perspective, you have to bring those two worlds together. And for us, it's been amazing. Like when we're looking at the type of repeat rates that we're getting from Pinterest customers, when we're looking at the conversion rate of Pinterest customers, you know, it, it really feels like they're, they're going through the content that they've already kind of believed in, They're, they already are interested in this, and therefore um, it's not something irrelevant that you just clicked on because you were going through the journey. It's something that is really part of uh, the experience that you wanted to go through. And and that's you, what you're saying is that secret source is making sure you use organic with mm. paid, and the two are sort of intrinsically and strategically tied together yeah. to make both of them greater than the sum of their parts ultimately. For sure, yeah. Is the high street dead? And if so, what is replacing it? And what is replacing both parts of that experience, mm. the, the browsing experience, but then also the, um, the conversion experience? Our vision of the future of retail um, is very much that retail doesn't exist in one or the other, online or offline. Uh, retail transcends those two worlds. And that's why retail is beautiful because it boils down to the simple principle of uh, a value exchange based on a product, right? Mm. And so um, I think the high street is transforming dramatically, right? And very, very quickly. Um, and there are massive shifts in, in the way that we experience the high street and the way that what we use the high street for um, is changing completely. Uh, but at the end of the day, there is a role to play when it comes to retail in the physical space, because when you think about where that really strong kind of inspiration happens, a lot of times this is still in a space where you can smell, you can feel, you can touch, right? And, and that, that we won't be able to, at least from my perspective, replicate online. And we shouldn't, like it doesn't make much sense for us either. Online is really good for, um, personalization, recommendations that kind of extend your thinking, right? Um, and findability of objects, but also kind of like really going into uh, searchability of content and, and further new technologies, AR and so on and so forth. I think we'll really game change how we experience retail online as well. There's no reason why uh, we should think that that's not going to continue as long as you turn the high street into a space of experience rather a space of just walking around stacks of uh, clothing, for example, and trying to pick the right thing from the rack. How do you use Pinterest as a user? And can you give me a couple of use cases where it's really helped you sort of realize the power of Pinterest? I'm, I'm a windsurfer, um, so I, I love windsurfing. It's, it's one of my passions. And it's extremely hard to stay on top of what the latest trends are. Um, I've got my own van that I'm setting up so that I can go okay. from beach to beach. And like, you know, you need a lot of inspiration to figure out, okay, how do I set this thing up so that it actually accommodates my needs, but at the same time, something enjoyable, something great. Uh, and Pinterest has been a godsend, you know, like that, that notion of like, I can follow boards that give me more inspiration around how I can van life uh, and all that but like how i can how i can set myself up so that i can pursue my hobby and at the same time kind of up my game uh when it mm. comes to like what i'm doing there so it's, it's given me a good perspective on how we as true are able to leverage pinterest as well because at the end of the day yeah we might we sell products um mm -hmm. but those products fit certain styles aesthetics and trends and and hobbies as well so how do we create the right boards and how do we create the right experiences for people to be able to discover the things that we're sharing as well i i, I would add to that as well just from my own personal experiences but i feel like pinterest makes me um 
I feel like it's little it's it's one of my little secrets that makes me more impressive to people because <laughs> I was I was I was thinking about designing this like modern day mental health spa thing. I was trying to think about what the convergence between a spa and a gym and a mental health um, therapy might look like. And so I started building out this Pinterest board. And what I created, really what Pinterest created for me was this most beautiful <laughs> range of aesthetics and colors. And I took it to my team and said, I think this is what we should build. And they were like, oh my God, I think they thought I was like the next Steve Jobs <laughs> or something. Oh, and I did the yeah. same with, with, with my office in New York, with my home in New York. And so personally as well, it's really sort of accelerated my inspiration. And as you say, when I, when I embark on a new project, when I'm feeling, when I'm looking to have my yeah my inspiration accelerated, it's been it's been a remarkable place for me. Um, Pinterest is a is a place for inspiration. I I guess my closing question for you, Alex, is what are you inspired by right now in life generally, and as you look forward to the, to the to the coming years and months? I I'm inspired by what's coming next because uh, you know we're going through this entire phase, but things are going to start looking better things are going to start opening up again and i think we'll see a very different we'll see new things as a society and as people and whether that is in our working life or whether that is in our uh in our cities in our areas or the people around us right and i'm i don't know i'm really excited to see what's going to come out of that because i think there's going to be a lot of positives there's going to be a lot of changes um and uh, whenever there's change, there's opportunities to make things better. At the end of the mm. day, that's what we should be striving for. It's been remarkable as an entrepreneur to see your business absolutely soaring through this period and really creating a platform for small business owners um, to, to, to build and scale their companies too. And likewise with Pinterest, it's been a pleasure to watch Pinterest do exactly the same, support small businesses, but also the, the incredible, incredible growth Pinterest has seen through this time. So um, it's, uh, and I think as, a, as someone who is, has used Pinterest in a dedicated way in my personal life over the last couple of years, the tips you've shared are gonna be so useful for me, but also for all of the people watching. So thanks again for the inspiration. Thanks again for the strategies. And um, I'm excited as a bit of a fanboy now to watch your business accelerate into the future. Thank you so much for having me.